Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. New world update time, new patch, the entire economy gets shut down for a second time since launch, and a whole new incentive to flag up for PvP so that PvP can exist outside the vacuum of instancing. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Amazon Game Studios are doing a massive amount in a short space of time to patch up the new world ship. It's got to start getting better soon, right? Well, let's see what we have. A furniture dupe. So after the last dupe where the economy shut down, which caused in turn another dupe to arrive, we now have another dupe. So we've duped our dupes. Similar to the previous one, this one was about the luck trophies and furniture, which prior could easily go for 30 to 50k depending on your server. Makes the watermark farm go that bit much faster, and who doesn't want that, let's be real. And there were even steps posted on the bug forum. Simply lag whilst having an item selected for moving, move it around, move the item you want to dupe, and then pick it up. Sounds quite like the old invincibility bug in PvP where you just dragged your clients around in windowed mode. What'll come out with the new patch as well? Each patch seems to bring out something new and broken. I mean, even if you aren't playing New World anymore or never have, it's been one of the most interesting launches in recent memory for just how many things are completely broken. With New World, it's been exploit early, exploit often. Amazon say they have permanently banned over 1,200 players since November 2nd, with a further 460 with the recent wave of furniture dupes, claiming to have removed 98% of duped items and coin from circulation. Amazon Game Studios have to get the game-breaking exploits under wraps apps. So much is escaping the realms of test that should never go live. Each day where the economy is turned off, it brings the game to a new peak low in terms of players, and more and more players are losing trust in what they have the ability to do daily. Nothing will turn players away faster than the feeling of undermining their efforts and hard work in an MMO. This is why people despise pay-to-win games. It gives in-game reward for real-life wealth. Moving on though, we have a rather significant change just casually dropped in the patch notes where flagging up will now, on top of giving you 10% luck, will give you 30% gathering luck. Well, it looks like we're encouraging the mice to flag so the cats can chase them. This has proven time and again that incentivizing PvEers to become prey for PvPers has not been a good design choice. You want PvPers to fight PvPers. This is why Outpost Rush is popular, as long as your, you know, server isn't dead. This is why pushing territory influence works as well as wars themselves, there's a lot at stake there. Jagex, who run old school RuneScape, have spent years putting more and more PvE objectives into the wilderness. They've put in a resource zone for high level items, achievements, bosses, revenants that consistently drop some of the highest gold per hour in the game, some of the best training methods, unique rewards and so much more. And it's just not active whatsoever. The only active places are directly next to safe banking areas so players can just get their gear out quickly and find a fight. As soon as you go into the deep wild, you're probably running across PvEers. Here's a poll with 30k responses from July this year, where under a quarter of players said they entered the wilderness to fight other players, and less than one third said they thought the wilderness offered a good risk versus reward. Keep in mind, Old School RuneScape is a game where you will drop all but three of your items baseline, and if you are Scold, showing you have hit another player, you drop everything in your inventory and players think that is not an adequate risk versus reward. So New World fails to hit the risk versus reward really hard. Risk at the moment is losing progress on PvP quests, that's always existed, and durability loss, which also hits items which you do not have equipped, which has also been reduced by 10% this patch. No material loss whatsoever, as the game used to be. Also, the actual gear itself in New World fails to hit the mark on this. To max out your luck in the open world, you either need luck gear, or gathering luck gear equipped. This will by and large be far less combat effective than your PvP gear. If you get hit by somebody that's flagged whilst in your luck gear, you're probably going to go down in a few hits unless you have a good getaway plan or weapons with high mobility on them. You won't beat an equally competent player in luck gear unless it just so happens to be very combat effective. So despite you actually flagging up, you don't really want to fight back. If you die in your luck gear, what risk are you taking on? A durability slap on the wrist and a teleport to your nearest storage unit to deposit your gains and anything that could up your durability losses. It's actually not an entirely bad outcome dying. You don't have any material loss from your inventory and with 30% gathering luck and 10% chest luck, you should easily be able to outdo your repair costs. And look what we just got in the patch as well. We got link trading posts and you can't post sell orders if your storage is overweight in a certain settlement. So this means both, it doesn't really matter nearly as much where you want to store things anymore. 
and you actually want to split up where you're storing your items as well. Also for open world PvP, it fails on enemy power recognition, aka I cannot tell what I'm fighting before they're absolutely in front of me. You just can't. Amazon took some pages out of Art of War here. In World of Warcraft, if somebody has the Season 2 PvP helm on and 12k health or whatever is good nowadays, I know that's a PvPer. If I'm in old school RuneScape doing a clue in the wilderness and I see somebody with a skull over their head and an ancient staff pop up on the edge of my vision, I know that's a PKer. In New World, imagine you're gathering and now a player flagged starts running toward you in the distance, like that scene in Monty Python with the guys running up to the castle. I squint my eyes to try and see what kind of build he has. Majority of the armor in the game is copy paste, so that's nothing to go off. Maybe you can see his main Hannah weapon if he's dodge rolling and cancelling to speed up his movement. That's not really a huge tell, and there's no portrait to judge off their total health, and mana is fixed. Perhaps the only real tell will be the Void Bent Helm. If you see that, you pretty much know it's going to be somebody who's got PvP in mind. The mystery shouldn't be, I just don't know what I'm fighting, but what kind of weapons is that person using? What actives does he have? How best can I play around those with the tools at my disposal? At the moment, it's, oh well, I think I should have run behind that rock, put my PvP gear on and gone and fought instead, which we don't even have gear sets for. And that's before we even get into faction population on servers either. But don't worry, the first huge round of class balancing is in with a patch too. Balance would have been a bit more prioritized if it weren't for, well, you know, everything else that's gone in with New World but surely they're addressing some of the clear outliers which are a bit over the top. I don't know about you guys, but I thought there were definitely some weapons which felt like they could do everything and then some other ones like musket and bow. Firestaff and Ice Gauntlet both nerfed heavily, like I'm not sure where the part of them is that didn't get nerfed. Now, I do have the majority of my time on this weapon combo, and I thought Firestaff was overtuned for sure. Ice Gauntlet was as well, but it was just such a buggy mess that I never wanted to use it unless I really have to, but it was a really obnoxious zoning tool. Looking at some of the changes, they've increased damage on Pillar of Fire, but it's actually been decreased since the double hit isn't a thing anymore. They increased the damage slightly on Flamethrower, which is a short range attack that you have to max out in talents for it to be anywhere useful, and it doesn't have any grit, so that's a pure PvE ability. They've reduced the damage scaling on pretty much every single passive that the staff has. Looking at Ice Gauntlet, the auto speed has been nerfed. I'm actually okay with this because it felt so clunky before. If it feels like Fire Staff, I'm actually fine with that. Ice Shower and Entombed have both been mega nerfed overall, but don't worry, Wind Chill and Icy Pylon have got buffs. There was some reason nobody was using them. It's not the damage they were doing let me put it like that well those are some pretty harsh nerfs to some weapons that i'm very familiar with i hope some other ones have got adjustments too let's have a look at great axe i feel like i see that weapon quite often well it's just bug fixes and a buff to an underused ability they've actually buffed great axe just for a reference on the most popular weapons here if we go off steam achievements 7.4 percent of people have mastery 20 on hatchet 6.6 percent on great axe 4.7% on Life Staff, 4.1% on Warhammer, 3.7% on Fire Staff, and 3.3% on Ice Gauntlet, and then the other stuff after that. It's not even the damage for Great Axe, it's just the toolkit. It does everything. It has a dash, a permanent movement speed buff, a grab ability, like Darius in League of Legends, a gravity well, like Zarya in Overwatch, permanent grit on attacks, attacks that jump you forwards, and very wide swings. Fire Staff has a dash and high damage except we're going to cross the high damage part out now, I guess. For Hatchet, which is very widely played as well, they buff the unplayed spec whilst bug fixing the main one. Hatchet has an ability that gives you movement speed, damage, grit, a heal over time, as well as a three second immunity to death. What about Warhammer, the most paired with Great Axe in PvP? They've just buffed the unused abilities. Life Staff also got nerfed. I'm actually okay with the nerfs in Heavy Armor, that seems okay. I didn't actually mind it being strong slash maybe OP because it was the only healing weapon. I would have wanted to see how Void Gauntlet performs before they absolutely ruin it. Overall, damn, they might as well have just said in the patch notes, Mage is out, everybody getting the Sacred Ground Gravwell Death Ball. This is what PvP on our game is going to be. For the first big round of changes, this is not very encouraging. And for what it's worth, I have tried a different build with Bow and Spear. I think Spear seems fine, borderline very good after the patch and Bow were. Uh, yeah, I'm not exactly Shroud, but the hitboxes seem to be way off and you either do 80% of somebody's health in the opening shot or you just tickle them from afar. But I'm not sure about this, no direct nerfs on Warhammer CC chains and Great Axe being able to do everything feels like looking into Arena and TBC at the moment and saying, yeah I reckon Resto Druids and Rogues actually could do with a little bit of a buff to the specs they aren't using in the moment. But with the patch up now, let's see how the population looks Sunday and whether they can turn too much around. I'm not overly hopeful for my main weapons anymore. 
but I'll continue branching out. I'll be interested to see whether the luck changes do affect world PvP and get more people out and about flagging, and whether we get a new unintended set of dupes or changes out of the patch as well. That's about it though, let me know your thoughts guys. As always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I shall see you on the next one very soon.